Hey everyone, hope you're enjoying episode 13, Treasure Hunters Go Wild, part 1. I am now introducing part 2 of Treasure Hunters Gone Wild. This has a lot of great stories in it. With Too Long for One podcast, we split it into two. So without further ado, here is the epic Treasure Hunting Gone Wild, part 2, episode 14. That's a good point. I I don't know that I've ever beat any of these games actually at the arcade. I mean, I beat the the Ninja Turtles game mm-hmm. on the S, is it SNES yeah. that it was on. Yeah. But I had never beat the actual game. No. There. I've There's never a lot of quarters. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to move into some story time. Go ahead and sing your theme song that you prepared, Brad. Oh, this time. Yeah, I didn't prepare any theme song. Oh. I don't know what you're talking about. Let down. Oh, yeah, you let down the audience. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're going to talk about a few parties. Uh, we're not real big on partying. Uh, you know, we've had some here and there, and I'm just going to go over a few uh, that we've been to. I don't think Brad's been to a few of these, but we'll you know chime in when necessary. Uh, the first party I'd like to bring up is the party when our good friend Joe Cover- Covarubius left for the Army. Uh <laughs> He had a few friends over. We played games. His mom and dad cooked this hella good carne asada. Oh God, yeah, mm-hmm. man, that that was so good. Authentic Mexican carne asada. And Jason Johnson was just eating it all. <laughs> <laughs> that fool was putting it down. <laughs> yeah, it didn't matter if you put it in a tortilla or you stayed <laughs> straight. It was the bomb. Yeah, it was really good. I don't know how they marinated it or what. It mm-hmm. was, they barbecued it, I believe, grilled it. Uh, we played Dreamcast, you know, virtual tennis, hot shots golf for PlayStation. Yes. That was fun. Yes. And, um, of course, Brian Cobra was there giving his little quips. <laughs> and we got a cookie. <laughs> I'm going to shank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I miss that guy. Yeah, I did too. Um, and so they also have kind of a bounce house, <laughs> which is pretty tight. I think that's a, that's a Mexican thing to do. No. They like their bounce houses for whatever reason. What if they put a piñata in a bounce house? That'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, in the bounce house, uh, Joe was real big on UFC, like, more than any of us. He was always uh, doing moves and stuff. And he wrestled, a, uh, or, he, you know, we did some UFC in the bounce house. And he was like, I'm going to get you in an arm bar. So he put me in an arm bar. Uh, it was even my weak hand, my right hand, because I'm left-handed. And he couldn't get the, like, he had the position on me, but he wasn't strong enough to pull it. So I just lifted him up, and I, he was like, I'm going to get it. And he never got it. <laughs> he was a little guy compared to me, I guess. And then uh, our, that was, like, I think one of the only times my mom actually let me stay the night at someone's house. And... Um, we all, I don't remember where you slept, but we decided to go up to the treehouse. Yeah, I remember that. I, 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 for some reason, I don't remember sleeping in the treehouse. I thought maybe it was, like, too uncomfortable because basically we were just sleeping on wood. Yeah. <laughs> I remember sleeping indoors, but you guys, you said that, uh, I guess Jason slept up there and he mm-hmm. stole all the pillows. Yeah, <laughs> that's me the most comfortable one up there. But when I woke up, it was, like, him, myself. I believe Aaron and Joe were up there, and he stole all the pillows. I don't know how he got them all, but I woke up with the worst neck ache in the world because I was sleeping on a knot in the tree. <laughs> Did you wake up with semen on you? Oh, yeah. sick. Jason would always just talk about throwing his semen all over his mirror and what <laughs> coming on everything <laughs> and, and the milk jug. <laughs> You remember that? I was like, Jason, what would you do if your mom like came over and like took the VCR from you or something? He's like, I would jack off in the milk jug. <laughs> <laughs> he came over to my house for a couple of times for game night when I hosted it when I lived in Carmichael, and he would always like grab a tissue box and start humping it and <laughs> the opening, and then he like we 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 played Bloody War three and he was all fascinated with Jenna the bat yeah and I was just like dude calm down he just like wanted to check off into everything <laughs> 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 he, and he was the one that um, taught me the rule 
If you don't touch it when you pee, you don't have to wash your hands. <laughs> <laughs> we went to a hard, we went to a hardcore show at um, what was that place on S Street? Uh, West Coast Worldwide. Yeah, West Coast Worldwide. And they didn't have a bathroom there, so we had to go across the street to go to the bathroom. Ernesto's. Yeah, at Ernesto's. And after we got done, Aaron said, "Aren't you going to wash your hands?" To Jason, and Jason said. What? I didn't touch it. <laughs> uh, I remember for my bachelor party, he, he bought me a porno. It was called I Wanna Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it, was like, it was between this and a blow-up sheep. Oh, oh man. man. I was like, oh, thanks for the VHS. <laughs> Do you still have it? No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So the next party I wanted to bring up was at Jeremiah's house when we had our graduation. Uh, Jeremiah's a good friend of ours and always hung out during, I only met him in 12th grade, um, but he had a graduation party and of course there were a bunch of cool people there because he was a cool guy. There was like, R R what's his name, RJ? <laughs> RJ was there. I would call him a cool guy. I mean, I like RJ and everything, <laughs> but he wasn't considered a cool guy. Um, RJ and of course there was us, Aaron, JD, Jason, uh, again Jason, uh, Brian, Joe. But uh, I seem to remember, wasn't there a draw there? Yeah, I think there were a few of them. That's what threw me off. Though. Yeah, like I know we're supposed to want to have broads at a pool party, but I was like, uh, that was very uncomfortable. This is weird. There's like freaking five guys for every girl here. It's not right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and every, every one of them just wants to be with Jeremiah. Right. <laughs> so we uh, started the day off with playing. We were up in his bedroom. It was like he lived in an attic or something, a loft. That's pretty sweet, actually. Yeah, yeah, I, would, well, I would love to have lived in that room. So he uh, had his games hooked up. He had like Madden hooked up and some Gran game Turismo man. game and of course, we wanted to play the fighting games and not these boring games. So eventually, uh, due to lack of interest, we moved down to the pool, and that's where we started having fun with football mm -hmm. and, or I think we called it water rugby. Something like that. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, basically, your team tries to get the ball to the other side of the pool, and uh, things between Aaron and Jason kept escalating. <laughs> uh, Aaron Gower, they uh -huh. kept escalating, and uh, Aaron was pretty aggressive uh, in the in, when we were playing. I think there was something about people having unclipped nails. People mm -hmm. kept getting like scratch marks all over. Yeah, them. they were just it just reached a boiling point. Eventually, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. And so uh, I think what broke the the straw that broke the whale's back was when uh, uh, whale's back, you mean? in this case the whale. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Aaron had maybe on purpose but accidentally ripped J Jason's shirt because we were on the pool we all had our shirts off except for him he was the only one that had a shirt on a tank top <laughs> I, I think it was to uh, protect the girls eyes yeah. so he Aaron had ripped the the, the uh, shoulder strap of one of the, the tank top shirts and he looked like Tarzan with, the <laughs> <laughs> with his chest hanging out. I think Andre the Giant yeah. walked up. <laughs> <laughs> and then so he gets second mad, and he goes and lays down on the diving board. <laughs> of course, face down. And we're like, what's wrong with Jason? And he was like, I'm sick. But he was just too shy. But that was fine, and then at the at end of the night, we all got into a heart-shaped hot tub, <laughs> and like eight dudes yeah. in it. <laughs> there, there was, I think there was one broad at that point. I can't remember mm. who it was. It was. It was some cool chick. Was it from the band? Someone from the band? No. Oh. Uh, she was... Oh God, I can't remember her name. I think Aaron had a thing for her also, mm. but I can't remember her name, though. I want to say like Elizabeth or something, but I know that's not right. Jennifer Crockett. No, it wasn't Marissa Roper? I don't think so. I don't believe really Yeah, so. I can't remember who it was either. Yeah, but we were in the, our heart our heart shaped uh, hot tub and I was like a tight. His mom came out and took pictures. And I actually um, remember, like, years later seeing that picture somewhere. I think he had it hanging up at his house on our Halloween party. <laughs> uh, we went to a Halloween party, he had it hanging up. And then the last story, I'll let Brad take the reins on. What's this story? The bachelor, bachelor party. <laughs> My bachelor party? Yep. Oh, man. Uh -huh. 
I don't know why I was so so I, I got married when I was 18 I wanted to have a bachelor party and I was like asking Brandon wouldn't it be tight if we had a stripper <laughs> Brandon was like no not really <laughs> <laughs> so I think I thought for some reason you're the one who pushed the idea of the stripper uh, I, it was more of your friends pushing the idea for the stripper. Oh, that's what it was. Your not, not your friends. Not my true friends. Your idiot friends. Yeah, the ones <laughs> who I got close to, like in senior year, because they all had dumb classes. Yeah. Yeah. Because I. You don't know who listens to this podcast. You don't want to burn any bridges. <laughs> I'm fine with burning bridges with Adrian Contreras. <laughs> oh wow! Name dropping. <laughs> No, I, but I haven't talked to him since then. That's why I don't consider him my true friends because I only talked to him like when I was in high school. But I invited a few of those guys, and then of course Nick, Aaron, uh, Mike. I don't think Mike came, and uh, you, Brandon. I I told you you were in charge of it because you had the um, college. What was it? The the financial aid check. Yeah. <laughs> to pay for the stripper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was a grant or something that I got each quarter or semester or whatever. <laughs> so we, we called and hired a stripper. They said that she was going to show up at 10. So I think my party started at like 6. And we were just playing games. I remember someone brought X-Men the arcade, the movie, the mm-hmm. arcade game. That's probably, was Joe there? I don't think so. I don't remember Joe being there. Um, we played that. We played House of the Dead. We played um, Virtua Tennis, I believe. <laughs> And so we went and ordered. I, I had these coupons for Papa John's where you get one, buy one large pizza, you get one free. I remember that, yeah. And I kept using the coupon over and over that again. That night, huh? Yeah. Yeah. We got like six pizzas and got six for free. The huh? combination, that, that pizza was so good. And then we also got this huge chocolate cake that had a rainbow on it with the clouds and the rainbow. And so the, 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 high, the high point is the stripper coming over. So, like, we never knew, like, what to have a stripper there for. I believe only a few of the people there, like, had sex. I was one of them, of course. I don't think you did yet. Not, <laughs> like, way later. <laughs> <laughs> like, 26. <laughs> uh, and, of course, we invited Uncle Ron over. Yeah. <laughs> Uncle Ron came over. So we're waiting. It's like ten o five. Who was right? He how to get there? <laughs> <laughs> Our grandma. <laughs> Our grandma, his mother, took him to a bachelor party, <laughs> and she was, and she left. Right? No, she stayed. She stayed the whole time in the car. In the car the whole time <laughs> across the street. <laughs> so from six o'clock until probably midnight, she was there just like waiting in the car for my uncle. Yeah. So we're uh, waiting there, it's 10.05, a bunch of naive little boys, 17, 18 year olds, waiting for the stripper, 10.05 hits, and then you're like, dude, where's the stripper at? I said, I don't know. You're like, go look outside, see if she's there. So I went outside and looked, I walked down my pathway, saw that a, a, a stripper with two bouncers hmm. sit, standing in the parking lot talking and smoking, I'm like, oh shit, they're here. So what I do, I, I took a few rocks from the ground, I don't want to make it seem like I would went out there to look where they were. <laughs> so I, I looked down, got some pebbles from my flower bed, threw it in the trash can and left. <laughs> <laughs> was that like a signal like we're over here? No, it was like a signal like I didn't want them to think I was coming out there just to look at them and wait for them. <laughs> oh, so you, like you're throwing something away? Yeah. Oh, okay. Rocks. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's dark, can't see, so hopefully they bought it. So I go back in the house, and then like five minutes later, the doorbell rings and stripper comes in. And uh, the only thing I remember about her was she was blonde. I can't remember her name. I don't know if it was Brandy or what. I think it was Brandy. Yeah, <laughs> it was, yeah. Okay. So I remember sitting in a chair that had arms in it, and it was like <laughs> a like a single chair, like a love seat, but it was a single chair. And uh, Jason scooted over next to me. He's like, I want to be next to the the, the bachelor <laughs> man. I get all the action. Yeah. And so she's like, does anyone have an armless chair? And I had to go sit in an armless chair. It's like, oh, come on. So I think there was the first game was you guys had to hide dollar bills on me, and she had to find them uh-huh. or something. And so, like, people put them everywhere, and I was sitting there, like, getting, like, violated by the stripper, and I was like, not one time 
I popped a boner. I couldn't. I too couldn't, nervous. I don't know if it's too nervous. I just wasn't turned on by her. But um, so she's all filling all over, and then so I remember the next game um, with the body shots. Yeah. This is where things got interesting. <laughs> Brandon didn't at this time drink, no, nor did any of the other people there. And I remember she bought a bottle of watered down tequila, and I know it was watered down now because I've had real tequila. And I could just throw that stuff back that she had all the long day. It was like watered down. So what you did was you did a body shot off her. Um, I did one, and then it came Brandon's turn. Why is it my turn? Because you were the ma the best yes. man. So I <laughs> so she got on all fours. I I, no, no. At first we had to raise the money for me to do the body shot. So I was hoping no one didn't have enough money, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then I just remember like people throwing money, and then there's like one dollar left, and then Nick just went. That was like the most disgusted look on his face. And then Brandon's like, "I don't even drink. I don't drink alcohol." Yeah, so I'm gonna get out of it by saying I don't drink. And then I was like, I've got some Kool-Aid in the fridge. <laughs> yeah. So we replaced the tequila with Kool-Aid. At this point, I think her underwear is off. She, yeah. like, completely naked. <laughs> walked around with my <laughs> lustful eyes, Jason and my uncle and... Adrian and Blake and Russell. Oh, man, they're <laughs> Ben Etchington. Yeah, 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 Ben. ben so, the stripper's on all for her. She puts the, the wedge of lime in her ass. And Brandon's yeah, like, It was more like her taint. Yeah. <laughs> so Brandon's like, what do I got to do again? She went through it. So you had to take the shot first, right? And then you had to go down and get the line. <laughs> and he went and got the line. <laughs> Somehow he dropped it and went back right in the same spot. I went deeper. <laughs> and then she's like, no, we need to get the line out. And he was like, <sighs> shaking his head. So we finally went down and dug it out, fished it out. And it, uh, and then it was um, Ben's turn. Ben did one, and he was all for it. And oh, he was yeah. like, Dino Might. Dino Might. Yeah. And she was like, get the line. He was like, ooh, Dino Might. I can't remember if she put it for him. It was probably in between her boobs or something. And he was loving that. And then so she went around and uh, did dances for everyone who wanted. She's like, you guys can put money out on you, and I'll, I'll dance for you, and I'll give you lap dances. So I remember. Adrian Contreras pulled down a zipper and put a 20 in yeah, her. I remember that. And Jason like, just had a, a $5 bill like in his pocket or his shirt or something. Yeah, because she like took the money from Adrian and gave him like a little dance. And then she moved right on to Jason and... She went to town with Jason. She laid Jason down and rubbed her snatch all over his face and his nose. <laughs> and she actually had to pull, pull his shirt down because he was getting the boner. She was like on the 69 towel so she was facing away from him. I don't remember that. <laughs> and, and Jason was like, uh, wait. Uh. <laughs> and, and she was like, it's okay, honey. And she was pulling his shirt down to cover his boner. <laughs> he was probably blown up. <laughs> I remember when afterwards he was like, yeah, when, when she was on my face and on my nose, I was like this. <laughs> just smelling <laughs> <just laughs> it. <laughs> I remember that. And she was like creaming his blaze in his face, like going to town on it. And he was, and he only gave her five bucks. <laughs> and Adrian, I remember he was pissed. Yeah. He was like, I give that fucking bitch twenty dollars and she had to do nothing. With Jason she lays him down and <laughs> rubs a snatch all over his face. Yeah. And then so the highlight of the the moment comes when she's like, Do you guys want a toy show? And we're like, Yeah <laughs> and she was like, I didn't say yeah. And she was like, Well, I, I got this little toy here that I could play with for you guys. It costs hundred and sixty dollars extra. And so we all get together and Brent and like Brennan, you know, you gotta pay for this toy show. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'll, I'll use up all my money. He's like, I use up all my financial aid right now. I don't have any more to spend. You can't even buy books on next semester. <laughs> <laughs> so then everyone's like, We all got cards, can you use cards? And she's like, No, I take cash only so it's probably the only time in this stripper's life 
where people actually left to go to the ATM machine <laughs> and the party was put on hold. Four guys, like, we'll go to the ATM, we'll be right back. We'll do, go to the ATM, they all, each got $20 each out. My grandma, who's in the parking lot, <laughs> the next day she goes, I saw them boys running out of that, that house, going to the ATM machine. You should have saw the lust in their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> they look like animals. <laughs> animals. <laughs> so we get back with $80, and she's like looking, and she's like, okay, I just want to let you guys know, this is the lowest I've ever done this for. I mean, $80, that'll, that'll only get you like one and a half songs. We're like, fine, just do it. <laughs> so she starts using her toy everywhere, and... and the song is going, I think it's My Pony by, uh, I don't know who sings it, but my uncle is like <laughs> moving his head, stomping his foot, yeah, moving his whole body, and he's so into it, and Aaron's sitting next to him, and my uncle's like, you gotta watch this, man, you gotta watch this. Come on, be more vocal, yell, and he kept hitting Aaron in the, in the ribs with his elbow, like, yeah, you see that, you see that? <laughs> 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 so I just I, every time I look back on that, it's just so hilarious how this, this lady like went and took eighty dollars for something she she was to pay double for. And I remember when my uncle uh, when she was coming around and she got to Aaron and my uncle was like wanted Aaron to move over because she was going to give him a lap dance on the couch and then he's like move over move over boy move over <laughs> so she could straddle him yeah. And she was like, when she was done, she was like, that's the most quietest anyone's ever been in my whole life. <laughs> well, I was thinking, well, if you do it for a bunch of 17 and 18 year olds, that's what you're going to get. <laughs> and I remember she was like, everyone's here over 21, right? <laughs> We're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think Ben was 17. <laughs> <laughs> ben loved it. He had a blast from what I remember. <laughs> but I remember I asked, um, I can't remember if I asked Russell or if I asked Adrian how they liked it, and they're like, yeah, I just went home and beat off all night. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so that, that's, that's my best. Oh, and, and the rainbow cake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we didn't eat it all, and I remember I had it for like weeks, two weeks after just like eating it, and the frosting actually turned white, and I still was eating it. I threw it away, or my wife threw it away. I went and fished it back out and got it. <laughs> um, so, Nick, did you have anything you want to talk about um, Las Vegas? Like any memories or thing you want to bring up? Oh, I have all sorts of memories from it. Um, I think you guys covered most of it last week. Um, you guys left out that we went to the Penn and Teller show, which I thought was really cool. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I'm a big fan of Penn Gillette. I love his podcast that he does. He does a podcast called Penn Sunday School that I love to do every week. Um, we got you and I got a picture with Penn. I, I thought that was awesome. Um, we spent a lot of time at the Rio. Actually, the the buffet there was amazing. I think you guys talked about that a little bit about the lobster tails and all that. That was actually on the Fourth of July, so we missed any fireworks. That yeah, we were eating a buffet for a couple of hours. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, we went to. Uh, the World Series of Poker was going on at that time, and I'm a big poker fan, so we went to watch the final table of the uh, the Poker Players Championship. It's a, uh, I think it's the second biggest buy-in event of the series. It was a $50,000 buy-in. They play, I think they play like a 10-game mix. So Brandon and I sat there at the TV table. Like if you watch the World Series of Poker, they have one set where they do all the, the TV filming. We were sitting there, and there, there actually wasn't that many people there. I was kind of surprised for it. Like, it was one of the premier events. It was a final table, and they were down to only three players. We were in the audience. Yeah, there weren't that very many people there. I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, at one point they might show that. And we might, you might, we're not, might actually be on there. I hope not, because I know my balls are hanging out on my leg up in my <laughs> basketball short time. I know at one, one point in time I had to cover them up in my underwear. <laughs> so we saw a lot of... Uh, a lot of poker players that I recognized, that I tried to point them out to Brennan and Aaron, I don't think we recognized any of them. Uh, if you're a poker fan, we saw David Benjamin, we saw Min Lee, we saw Huck Seed, Jonathan Duhamel was sitting at one of the tables, and at that final table that we were watching in the uh, for the TV show was John Hennigan, also known as Johnny World, and the guy who won the... Uh, 
won the event. He won a $1.7 million, and his name was Matt Ashton, some British dude. We were actually sitting next to his friend. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, it's Bang Club. The guy kept, Matt Ashton, the guy playing poker, kept ordering drinks for him. Do <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> yeah. He saw, hey, hey, Matt, Matt, another gin and tonic. Yeah. <laughs> and the waitress would come by and bring him drinks. It was pretty cool. But then on the other end of the uh, the uh, TV set, whatever you want to call it, arena, there was um, a bunch of poker players that were rooting for, I, I'm assuming they were rooting for John Hennigan because he's kind of one of the more popular players and he's probably more in the high stakes games in Las Vegas. But we saw Phil Galfond over there, which I pointed out to you. He's known to be one of the best, probably the best pot limit Omaha players in the world right now. So that was kind of cool. We actually walked by him in the hallway. And mm-hmm. I, I thought about stopping him and uh, talking to him, but he was talking to someone else, so I didn't plug with him. Um, I played a lot of poker, played a lot of blackjack. I actually came home up like 200, 250, something like that, which is pretty cool considering how much I played. I mean, the more you play, the more likely you are to lose, really. Yeah. Any, ga- any game against the house, you're, you're going to lose in the long run. So the fact that I came home up was pretty awesome. We talk, You guys talk about Valley of Fire. Yeah, right? the goat of crisis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I posted that video of <laughs> Brad. <My descent. laughs> and that was pretty funny. My nimble descent. <laughs> uh, I don't think I have too much to add on top of that. Okay. <clears throat> Should I do the hunt? Yeah. Okay. So in episode 10, or 11. 11. 11. We talked about uh, our adventures on the hunt as Crisis Kane and Torment uh, adversary had joined us on the last podcast. So now we want to go back and tell the tale of the other two hunts we went on. Our second hunt uh, was, I believe it was pretty quick, uh, hot on the heels of the first one. It was maybe a week or weekend or two after. <laughs> we were like, w- let's do this again. So uh, this time we were, it was just myself. Torment, Kane, and Adversary, who went out, and we we had uh, we were going to face the subterranean behemoth, right? Yeah, and I remember I prepared for this. I got these uh, energy drinks that were the manas, and I took the label off so those like potions. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> and then we set them around like different. Yeah, yeah, we hid them around different uh, monuments, I guess, of the field. And what, what we'd lead uh, Kane and adversary saying, I think there's an item over there. <laughs> and they'd get him, oh yeah. It's a potion. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that's where we ventured past the creek. We uh, The creek was dried up. There's a creek that divides the property where I used to live on. And it, it was dry because I believe it was during springtime or something. And... Uh, it was pretty pretty rough. We had these heavy weapons. We had to jump down into the creek bed and then climb back up on the other side. But it was well worth it. Wasn't that the Field of Eternity? We found the Field of Eternity, named by adversary. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I remember we got there and he screamed out on the top of his lungs, <laughs> The Field of Eternity! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and of course we had our usual fights with the goblins and the orcs and... Uh, maybe a water elemental here and there, and then we came across this tube. You remember that? It was like a um, space tube. No, <laughs> it was. We didn't figure out what it was, huh? No, uh, I remember Aaron or Nick thought it might have been something from a dirt bike or something, mm-hmm. or a jettison from an airplane or something. Yeah, it, <laughs> we cracked it open and smelled it. I'm surprised we didn't turn into zombies from that. <laughs> <laughs> it smelled really bad. I don't remember that. And so I remember walking, Aaron had a bow staff and we had our weapons, and all of a sudden a feather popped out of the bush and and scared the shit out of all of us. <laughs> I remember Aaron stood there with his bow staff on ready to strike like he was, he got so spooked. <laughs> That's what I remember about that. Yeah, that one, I think that hunt is the least I remember. It was great, um... Great walking, but, uh, you know, great adventure, but I don't remember too much about it. I remember we fought the subterranean behemoth and beat it. I think, did we call Belmac? I think Nikki's his tidal wave. Yeah. That was, I think his first appearance is <laughs> tidal wave. Yeah. <laughs> or, sorry, Kane used tidal wave. <laughs> he shouted on the top of the line, tidal wave! <laughs> 
and uh, <laughs> that was the time when we got back. As soon as we got done with the boss battle, it was like all of a sudden my phone worked again. Mm -hmm. I had like 15 missed calls from Karen, <laughs> and she called and said that there was a fire <laughs> like down the road, and she thought we might have started it. <laughs> 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 No, we didn't, we didn't use fire spells. We used water spells. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when did we track mud into the house? Remember that was that? the first one. Oh, was it? And, and then I'll, I was getting Al Van to clean the carpet because <laughs> I knew Karen was good. At the time, we had carpet. Later, we got the hardwood floors. You want to talk about the third one? Go ahead. So the third hunt, this is when things got really weird with Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> oh, not on my part. I had nothing to do with this. You had a little bit to do with it. Okay, so Brandon and uh, Aaron came up with these alter alter egos <laughs> called Shin Crisis and Jonathan Seabear. <laughs> and we were getting these text messages from adversaries saying something like, "This is Jonathan Seabear. I remember that. All you faggots are gonna die." <laughs> I'm going to rape each and every one of you. <laughs> and then whenever we, like, when we saw him that day, he, or when he came over that night, he was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, I didn't send those. <laughs> and there was a, a message board, the drop step board, <laughs> that we were all on, uh, and um, there, Nick and Aaron and Alvin were in a band called Drop Step, and they had a message board, they had a website that we would post on, and... Aaron was in there, and he was just saying this weird ass <laughs> shit. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> like, pretend to be Jonathan. Does anyone know what Jonathan Seabear was? I think that's the when like AOL chat or when online chat first came came into existence. He created that ego for himself. Yeah, I, I was I was there when he created that <laughs> that uh, what do they call the uh, profile? I was going for a different word, but yeah, that's fine. Jesus, what's the fucking word? Avatar. Um, yeah, basically he just created this character who was like ultra Christian, but was kind of like had suppressed gay tendencies. <laughs> so he would he would just basically go into chat rooms and torment people, <laughs> say this ultra offensive bullshit, and he used the character named John Seabear. I don't know where he got John Seabear from, okay. but. That, that's kind of the origination of uh, John Seabear. So this was a few years before the hunt even took place. Yeah. Okay. John Seabear's been around for a while. And, and I can't remember if you did anything as Shin Crisis, but it was no, nowhere near nothing as John Seabear because I was, like, freaking out. <laughs> I was like, is he really doing this? He's like, I have no memory of what happened. <laughs> and, and he's like, oh, you fuckers are going to die and all this shit. You know, follow your soul. <laughs> so... We we go on a the third hunt. What was your point of it? What was your you had like some focal like you wanted to accomplish something with this like to drive out sea bear or what did you want to do? What I don't know if it was the exorcism of sea bear or if it was I think that's what it was because was Vlad the one that possessed him? Okay, so we walk over to Dan Donkey Dan's property past the maidens where we found the bones on the first hunt. And across the street, there's a... We have to talk about the vampire that, um, I got bit by a vampire. Was that first? When I laid Did that down? happen first? Yeah. Okay. So, all of a sudden, Nick, Aaron, and I find that Brandon's missing. We're like, where the fuck did he go? <laughs> and we're looking for like a half hour, no joke for it. We're like, where'd he go? Like, crisis, crisis, where are you? And then finally, like, I get worried, like... Brandon, where the fuck are you? <laughs> <laughs> I broke character. Did you find him in the creek or what? <laughs> so all this, we're looking around everywhere. I don't think we have flashlights. We're using phones. And then, so all of a sudden, I see your ass lying down in the dirt. Like, what's going on? Is he, is he okay? And then you're like, ah. <laughs> I think I got bit by a fire. <laughs> I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> You're fucking seriously doing this. <laughs> <laughs> like, at that time, at that moment, I was like, okay, he's lying in the dirt for fucking 30 minutes. How long were you there for real? <laughs> for a long time. I don't know how long. I was waiting for you guys to find me. <laughs> yeah, he, he told me he wasn't going to get up until the time. <laughs> oh, my God. 
<laughs> so he was laying there forever, and we were trying to find him. So he's like, so apparently no harm came to him. He was just like playing the part. He's like, yeah, guys, uh, <clears throat> I think I'll be by a vampire. <laughs> so we're like, okay, I don't, then at that point, I don't know if we went over to the meat packing. What happened? You saw, you, you, we had to find Vlad. Was that right? Yeah, Vlad the Impaler we had to find. And so we were going throughout the whole uh, forest looking, and we would see a group of vampires uh, by the meatpacking plant on the other side of 16th Street. <laughs> there, it's like midnight, 1 o'clock, and these people are working at the meatpacking plant. And then so Brandon's like, I'm going to go over and talk to them. So what happened? So I went over there. Um, I, had, I didn't want to go over there with a weapon, so I gave my blade over. I said, hold this guy. And then, so they were holding it on my bottle of holy water just in case they got attacked by a vampire. So I walked over and I was like, hey, have you guys seen Vlad? <laughs> <laughs> he used to work because it was his castle that we thought it was his castle. So uh, is Vlad here? And they're like, Vlad? These are actual people like yeah. standing around at midnight. The workers of the meatpacking plant. <laughs> Like Vlad, no, I'd be here 16 years, no Vlad. And what, what accent is that? Do you remember what kind of accent? Yeah, they, had? Uh, they were Hispanic. <laughs> that was your Hispanic. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not very good at at, <laughs> at accents. So uh, I was like, um, you sure Vlad's not here? He's not around. And then they kept denying it for some reason. <laughs> so what's going through your head when I'm over here? Like, this dude's going to get shot. <laughs> like, he's walking in on a drug deal or something. I have my holy water. <laughs> we really did have that. We thought that there might have been, like, some suspicious <laughs> stuff going on over there. I remember Nick, he was concerned. He was like, do you think he's going to be okay? Should we go with him? I was like, he knows what he's doing, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the, we really did think that, like, it was, like, some sort of drug thing or something. Yeah. It's just so weird. I've never seen anyone at that place before. And I've driven by there at all hours of the day. Hmm. And it was just like the first time I've ever seen anyone working there at all. So um, they denied Vlad being there. So that's when I came back and had to give the news that he was no longer there. So we walk back. We're trying to find Vlad. We walk all the way past back into my property and over by my father-in-law's house, back by a giant tree where he, by his place. Then all of a sudden, Sea Bear comes out. <laughs> oh. It started with a chuckle. <laughs> when when Aaron turned into Sea Bear, was the most frightening and awkward <laughs> thing. He like had a whole voice and everything. Yeah. And what was the thing with Shin Crisis? Um, I just think I was possessed. <laughs> I can't remember what the whole. Why do you two start fighting? Uh, I thought we were going to join forces because we were both evil. But um, I don't know why we started fighting. <laughs> okay, so... I, no, I started fighting you guys. I turned on you guys. Okay. And then it was just me against you three. And then <laughs> that's when the tides <laughs> turned. <laughs> I, I, I guess someone, someone else wanted to be the center of attention. <laughs> <laughs> so he start, that's right. You started fighting us. And all of a sudden, Sea Bear came out. And Nick and I was like, what's going on? <laughs> 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 all of his years of repressed homosexuality <laughs> came out and he yelled out that he screeched like a jackal <laughs> in heat ran over his crisis <laughs> and was dry humping his ass <laughs> for like <laughs> three to four minutes it was, not, it was only like four pumps <laughs> no <laughs> I remember looking at Nick multiple times, and it's not many times, not many times, not four times. So then it took it to a whole new level as you stumbled and you both fell. So he fell on top of you, and we're still going at it. And then so you're like this, you're on the ground, like getting honked, like vigorously, like in Hellraiser. And then your arms are like trying to pop. <laughs> I, I couldn't. I couldn't break free. <laughs> and you're, you're still there getting up. <laughs> and you're looking up at it, just looking at it yeah. like, and I'm like, 
What the fuck's going on? <laughs> Should we stop? <laughs> <laughs> so we decided to come on. <laughs> so you're just like, uh, like just going back for it. Uh, and you, uh, <laughs> It's like, he's not stopping. I was like, when's he going to stop? <laughs> and so, I was like, okay, okay. <laughs> that okay didn't help. It just was like, boom, boom, boom. If you think a headboard wasn't there, because you probably would have been cut. <laughs> I don't remember how, what ended it. I didn't know if you, I don't know how it stopped. But all, all of a sudden... Sea Bear got up and Shin Crisis was exercised, Sea Bear was exercised, <laughs> and that's the act that did it. But then we all walked back to my house and I was, <laughs> and they were like, <laughs> looking at Nick, I was like, is <laughs> supposed to happen? Was, was this scripted? <laughs> while you're getting home. I was like, all right, any minute these guys are going to pull this guy off of me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when there's like a, a, a mama grizzly giving the baby grizzly a bath, you don't want to touch the baby grizzly. <laughs> we weren't going to interfere with nothing. We didn't want that to happen to us. Yeah, well, I just remember laughing. <laughs> 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 I thought it was pretty funny. Did you like feel hardness at all? No. Okay. <laughs> do you do you remember what we did to exercise uh, j- uh, adversary of John C. I don't know. I think we just like beat the shit out of him. I don't know. Oh, exactly. like you just fought him. Yeah. I think you threw his whole, your holy water on. Oh, him. I might have. <laughs> <laughs> Should have tried the other route. <laughs> what other route? <laughs> oh, no, you got exercise. <laughs> oh no. So did John Seabear fuck the uh, the shin crisis out of you? I guess that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> because I was, it was like, okay, dude, I'm not possessed anymore. I'm not possessed anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of awkward. Yeah, it, it was. I, 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 the only memory I have is you moving back and forth, getting on. <laughs> And I just kept looking at Nick. That's the only two <laughs> pictures I have in my head. And Nick was laughing out there. <laughs> I want to say there was some tie-in with the tree being there. Because I remember it was like we were in the middle of this big field and there was a big tree that we were right next to. Mm-hmm. Do you remember anything like that? Maybe that's where the white oak was where we had to get the oak to slay Vlad. Maybe. Because in Castlevania too, you get you need white oak steak. So maybe that might have been the tie-in. Hmm. Yeah, that, that tree was something else. I never look at that tree the same again. <laughs> so that was our last time. Was that really the last one? We only did three. That's sad. I yeah, know. We, we need to do that again. I wouldn't be opposed. We still yeah. have all the weapons. Yeah. Does, uh, does your in-law still own that property over there? Mm-hmm. Is it being rented out to anyone? Mm-hmm. It's just there? Would he care if we went over there and explored it? It's fucking time. <clears throat> <laughs> That's like a second yeah. We should because that will bring up some more stories. Yeah. When does your uh, brother get back? September. Oh. Feels like a four would make a complete group mm-hmm. without adversary. Yeah, I agree. Then bring Gorgonzola back. No, oh, no. <laughs> He's been on Facebook talking. <laughs> so um, I had this weird dream <clears throat> a few nights ago. It was centered around the podcast. Um, I had in my dream I lived back on Norwood on the where my our first apartments we lived in in North Sac and I lived there with Jamila <laughs> and there was a like you know when you go out there's a that school there the play school yeah well instead of a play school there's a huge thrift shop so I go in there I tell Jamila alright I'll be back and I go over to the um thrift shop and they have all these like cards and games and stuff I'm like oh this is cool and then it starts getting weird I walk out from the thrift store and it does and it turns into like this kind of town square like old school town square with like back alleys and 
weird stuff like there was like freak like freak show people there like people with missing hands and missing feet and like hills have eyes mutants were all over the, like walking around mm -hmm. I was like this is crazy so I called Brian I was like hey you want to come record he's like sure so we find this it's not a duplex it's a triplex there's three houses in one so there's a middle house that is abandoned. We go in there, there's just garbage everywhere. It looks like homeless people had their way with it and ate food and just left it on the floor, flies on shitty plates and stuff. So it switches to us finishing up the podcast and we go outside of this triplex and in the last room, a, a door opens and there's this couple there with a guy laying on the floor dead and it's a hillbilly couple like inbreeders so I look and Brad looks I'm like all right let's just go and not say anything so we're leaving and then the, the hillbilly the, the skinny guy and a big fat lady like honey boo boo um, like walking behind us and then I'm like don't turn around just keep walking they're crazy <clears throat> of course Brad says something and they start chasing us so Brad turns around and starts stomping the guy like into like a flat person he just stops stop. then the he dies of course and then Brad's like let's get out of here so he runs he hightails it out and the lady is sitting there crying and all of a sudden she turns into this like creepy witch lady that looked like the witch from Insidious remember that yeah. the end looked like her and started chasing me and all these freaky babies started chasing me they turned into demons so I ran down an alley and got a blanket and laid down on the ground I pretend I was one of those homeless people and then I felt her presence behind me with all the kids. And then she was like, ah! She, and then I woke up, but I didn't wake up. I woke up in my dream. So it was like a dream in a dream. And I look over at Jamila. I'm like, that's crazy. And she's like, what? And all of a sudden, the, the TV turns on, and it's Jamila with one eye. I'm like, do you see that? She's like, I don't see anything. And all of a sudden, she turned into the witch. And I, like, wake up for real. I'm like, ah! And then Jamila, like, what? <laughs> gets up and goes to the bathroom I was like freaked out the whole night I think that's the only time recently that I've been scared to go back to sleep you know the one dream comes to mind that haunts me to this day when I was in third grade I had this dream that the dad from Mr. Belvedere you remember um Daffy Duck Fantastic Island mm -hmm. when the um all the the birds get plucked and they're like they're three chickens and they all get plucked and um, they're like all naked, but they're birds, so you don't see anything. Yeah. Well, the dad from Mr. Belvedere was in a, the a gym room shower, naked like that. He didn't have no genitals. He looked like looked like a naked bird, and that just freaked me out to this day. It's so weird. I don't, I don't know. I'm trying to remember what the dad from Mr. Belvedere looks like now. <laughs> That's weird. So uh, let's go ahead and go into the weight challenge. Uh, uh, so have you been what have you been doing uh, I've just been getting back to eating right and haven't been t had time to go to the gym but I'm going to start probably going with Jordan to uh, I'm going to get him a student pass so we could both start lifting weights and stuff so uh, I'm still the same weight as I am last time so I haven't gained any which is good but haven't lost any yeah it sucks I've been to the gym uh, I went Monday Tuesday did my weights Thursday, Friday did my weights, and I did cardio Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and I've actually gained weight. Uh, I don't know how that That's could be. weird. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I've gained a few pounds, so uh, really haven't been eating too bad. The only thing I really ate bad was this weekend. I had some pizza Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Even then, I really didn't overeat, so I don't know what's going on with that. Maybe I'm retaining some water. Some water, or you're not eating enough. Yeah, that could be it. Is not eating enough bad for you? Yeah. If you don't give the body your body the fuel it needs to maintain your weight, it'll actually start gaining weight. Oh. Yeah, I think I only eat like during the week maybe fifteen hundred calories. Yeah, that's that's not good. Oh, okay. So I'll have to eat some more then. I'll tell Jamila to pack me an extra Oikos Greek yogurt. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll do it for this week's edition of Treasure hunting for nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. Nick. Happy hunting, everyone.